Welcome back to Popo's Woodworks. Today's project is going to be another concealment box. So basically I built one, I put it up, that's my, my previous video on, on the channel. So that's a big square box. Matter of fact, I'll throw a picture right here for you to look at. But anyhow, I like it. I mean, you can put just about whatever you want to put in it, weapons, whatever. So I just scrolling online and I saw a picture of another one on there. So looking at the picture, I was like, huh, I actually like that. I'm going to try to build that one. And believe it or not, I actually like that one a little better. It's a little bit more practical hanging on your wall or, or whatever. So you can use it for a gun or a weapon. You can use it for whatever. You put whatever you just don't want people coming in and out of your house to see. I mean, it's unless they watch my video, they're not going to know that that box has a hidden compartment in it. So basically, I built one sitting up here on my workbench just as a trial run with some scrap wood. And I used pocket holes with a Craig jig and all the whole nine. And the lid... The pocket holes wouldn't work, so I had to glue the lid and use brad gun and brad nails. After that glue dried, I really worked on it trying to pop it apart. And this, she's holding strong, which I use tight bond three. So after that, it hit me. I don't need to go through all these extra steps using a Craig jig or any fancy tools. I'm going to build the rest of these. I think I got enough material where I can actually build seven of them. I'm going to knock them all out with nothing but a brad gun and glue. And that's it. So other than using my miter saw, to chop these things up, I might use my table saw. This is gonna be a breeze. So basically, stick with me and we'll watch this thing take shape. Okie dokie, here's my lumber list. I got a one by four by eight foot. I bought seven of those. That's just your, your regular old lumber at Lowe's. Right here is a, the one on the bottom is a two, correct correction, it is a one by 12 by 10. One on top is a one by 12 by eight. I really didn't need that top one to be that long, but of course, with Lowe's, your one by 12 by six foot is actually $4 more expensive than the one by 12 by eight foot. I just, I, I can't quite figure that math out and I don't know how they did either, but go figure, it is what it is. Here's the hardware. Now all this come from Lowe's. These are the little hooks I'm gonna screw in where you hang the keys at the bottom. This is called a French cleat. It's a 10 inch, you can get those at Lowe's. I think this piece right here was like 10 bucks and these are only like a dollar 40 something a pack and it comes with three in a pack and then you got the hidden hinges and you can see this one over here in the corner here's the hinges this the, like i said the trial run and i don't really like seeing all these holes here so these little hinges i found on amazon i can't remember who the carrier was but a lot cheaper than buying them at lowe's so we're gonna go ahead and get started on this and start cutting the wood down to size okay this is gonna be the back of the box and this is, I haven't cut anything off the width, and it's actually, instead of a 12 inch board, it's actually 11 and a quarter. I did make it 12 inches wide. So, basically I cut two of these, as you can see, this will be the back, and this will be the top plate. All right, <clears throat> then I took the one by four, and I cut it down and put a 45 degree angle on it. Let me make sure you can see this. And right here, I left the tip blunt because when you put it up against this, I want that blunt tip to match and run all the way to the edge here. That way the 45 comes down and like I said, you don't have a sharp point. But <clears throat> these are cut at 11 and a quarter also. So they're the same length as the sides of the board. So basically, I got two of those cut now I'm working on this crossbar. <clears throat> what you got to do is the lid is going to lay down and it's going to lay inside of this and be flush with this edge. So basically what I did is I put the one by four up, I drew a line, took this over to my table saw, and I cut that much off. All right. This is what I have now. So once I cut that off, it makes it perfectly level with the side rail. Now what I've got to do is this is the top piece. This is going to fit down in here and it's going to sit flush. So now I've got to cut the thickness of my top piece, which is three quarters of an inch. I got to cut that out of the inside crossbar. So easy way to do this, I'm just going to take that to my table saw and stick it in there and run my fence up against it next to the blade. And I've got the perfect thickness. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this down and uh, shave a three quarter inches off the side of this. And then we'll go ahead and start getting this thing attached together. So we're just about getting to the meat and potatoes now. I got my two sides done, crossbars done. So what I'll do is I'll line this up 
right where the 45 starts to cut down. And then right down here is where the hooks are going to go, where it's going to hang your keys or whatever you want to hang here. So I cut the top piece, and all I did is I took the tape measure, and I measured from this side to this one, which is 13 and 5 eighths, and then I cut a 1 by 4 down to that. So here's going to be your top. And this is going to be hard to show you without it being put together, but I'll try to do my best. Let me knock this one down. This is going to be the front piece. So basically, in a nutshell, I'm going to put this in here, and I'm going to glue it, and I'm going to shoot this with brads. That's what's going to hold the front piece on. The front mechanism is going to work on hinges, and it's going to close. And when it closes, I'll do it like this so you can see. When it closes, this end is going to sit right here on this crossbar. That's why we had to notch it down. Now all I gotta do is I'm gonna measure from the top to the bottom, and I may leave just a quarter of an inch overhang right here, so it'll be a little bit easier when you get your finger up, that way you can get your finger up under it when you go to lift it and lift the box open. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these top pieces cut down to size, and then we'll get to putting this thing together. So now I'm getting ready to assemble this part. So I'll take, add a little glue to the edge. Lay this down, I'm gonna flush it from the bottom. Take my bread, now I'm using an inch and a quarter bread. I'm just gonna throw tack two, that way I can stand it up and get the rest. Then I'll repeat the other side. The vibration from my workbench might be shaking the camera, and if it is, I apologize for that. So get that set, make sure it's flush. Stand it up and repeat. All right, now I just cut me, I had a scrap piece, so I just cut me a little jig to make my life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take, and this is the crossbar. I'm gonna run a bead of glue down the crossbar, stick this in here, like so, and then I'm going to hit this with brass. All right, now I'll wipe away any ex excess glue, and basically all I got left to do now is I'm going to line these up after this sets just a little bit. I'm going to line these up and get the top ready so I can shoot that with brads as well. All right, so now I'm going to attach the top. And I just cut a piece that's like this one. It's the same thickness. That way I can put it in here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up, take my pencil, just make me a little mark because it will never be seen right there. That way I know, I don't know if you can see this, but that way I'll know where to lay my bead of glue. So I'll just run it down between the two pencil marks. All right, now I'm gonna take this piece, set it in here. Line this up. Now, I'm gonna hold it. Get my brad nailer, and I'm gonna, t whoop, it moved on me. I'm gonna tack it. All right, so. Now that I got that tack, I'm going to give it plenty of shots here because that's what's going to take, that's what's going to take the blunt of the whole box is a constant lifting. So I want that glue and then brads to hold. But when you paint this or you stain this, it, it literally makes the brads disappear. Or you could also go back and throw some putty in there if you chose to, but I've never had an issue because I like using dark stain, so it just kind of blends in and makes it look rustic. So now I'm going to take this piece out, set this together just like that, set it off to the side, and let this one dry. So now I'm getting ready to install the hinges, and I don't know if you can see that, but they are non-mortise hinges, so they're, they're made for mounting a piece, two pieces that are completely flat like this. So basically... This is the hinge right here. Like I said, I got these on Amazon. But if you look at the hinge, this piece here, because I've been played with it 
about three or four different times because I don't believe in reading directions because I'm too impatient. But this little piece has got that little horseshoe on both sides. See if you can see that. And this right here is pretty much flat all the way across. The horseshoe on this application, the horseshoe has to go up. So I put it where you can see it. It's going to go on the top side. And then I'm going to butt this up. So let me see if I can get this camera positioned a little bit better and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can see I've already pre-drilled all my holes and I've got the horseshoe up. So basically I just slid this thing all the way over to the side until it touches this rail right here. That way it helped me know that I got it straight. And I'm gonna throw these screws in it. I ain't gonna really overdo it with the drill. I'll go back and fine tune it with the with a screwdriver. I can't seem to get that one in the hole. There we go. So basically all I'm doing is I'm lining this edge up on both sides. I lined it up. I took the hinges, laid it down, took a Sharpie or a fine tip Sharpie and I marked all the holes. Removed the hinge, pre-drilled the holes with a 1 16th bit, I think is what these hinges call for. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and throw the screws in this and get it anchored down and then I'll show you what it looks like after. All right, so what I'm doing now is I've got the box together. So if you can see, let me make sure this is on here. When you lift this, if this, let's just say the, the workbench is the wall. If you lift this, once it raises, and you see right here, it wants to, this corner is hitting, and which is actually lifting it up, so it would be lifting it up off the wall. So basically what I'm doing now is right here is the, the corner that I'm talking about. Let me turn it this way, right here. So I'm taking a quarter inch chamfer bit and I'm just running over here and I'm just knocking that edge off. That way it makes it nice and smooth. But I hit it with the chamfer, then I'll take my, my sander and I'll just, just smooth it out, make it look decent. And it actually makes it look round. That way when this piece opens, it doesn't, you don't have to worry about it hitting your wall and possibly scarring your wall or tearing up your sheetrock or what have you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this knocked down and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is after I hit it with the router get it right there you can see so it just just took the edge off which i've got my router i got it set pretty deep so the wheel the guide wheel you can see right here it cuts into this that's why i get my sander so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take and get the sander and i'm gonna knock this edge off and this edge and i'm gonna dress this piece right here up a little bit and just it'll end up making it look perfectly round so just a little tidbit of information but i'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and i'm not gonna bore you to death with watching me do it all right so basically this is what you end up with when it's done so now as you can see here i've got the the keyhole hooks in it i'll show you a quick video of how i do that excuse me i gotta reach around the camera here i don't feel like moving it all right so i measured i measured between here to here to see the thickness of this and found out what the center was so i use my combination square and what I'll do is I'll put it here and I'll just use that as a straight edge and I'm not going to go all the way to it side to side so I use that as a straight edge to find the middle and then I also did the math on it this is 12 inches wide so basically to get these things spaced out right I'll go two and a quarter inches then four three quarters then seven and a quarter and then nine and three quarters. So when I do that, pretty much that gives you two and a quarter inches from the end and that's two and a quarter inches from the end. Now I'll take a center punch just for the simple fact that small drill bits like to dance on you. And I'm gonna center punch right there where that line crosses so I know that all my hooks are going to be exactly the same. Now I'm going to take a 1 16th drill bit and I'll drill pilot holes with this and I'll put the eye hooks in. What I do with the line, that's why I don't come all the way to the edges, is I just take my sander, stick it in here and hit it and just erase the or sand the line away. But it doesn't mess with your holes as you can see. 
then all you gotta do is just take these little hooks and twist them on in until you get them good and tight and lined up the way you want them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that one started. I'm gonna go ahead and screw all these in and then we'll move on along. So this is what it looks like after you get the hooks in it. Let me see what, pardon me for a second. You running into the garage? This right here is my three-year-old little girl. Say hey to YouTube. She's actually battling leukemia and she's a lot stronger than her daddy is, but she has two and a half years of treatment and she's my little hero. So I was gonna take it a little bit of time to throw that in there. All right, I'm gonna, daddy's gonna get back to work. You gonna wave by? All righty. Here's what it looks like after it's got the stain. And you can see the little hooks for where you can hang your keys or whatever. And this is what it looks like open. So I got dark walnut on both of these. And I'm gonna probably do like I did my last one. I'm gonna make a decal, reverse it, and use it as a stencil and put something. I might do a, another American flag with a blue line in the center of this one and then do our last name with a weird little decal on that. But out of all that lumber, as you can see, I got four more sitting right there. And then this one on the top, that one's ready to go. The first one that's on the bottom, that's, that was my trial piece with the pocket holes and I didn't like that. So as you can see, compared to the beginning of the video, it looks, it's just clean. And like I said, it's all brads and glue is what's holding it together. And it's, she's tight, I mean, You'd have to really, really pull on it hard or do something stupid to break it. But anyhow, that's that. If you got any questions, shoot me a comment. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And like always, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.